Hi, welcome to another edition of Media Unlocked. My name is Neil Kesterson with Dynamics Productions. Today, lavalier microphones. We're going to learn all about them, when to use them, when not to use them, all their functions. Don't worry, it's, we're not going to get too technical, but we're going to get technical enough that you can follow what I teach you and get success. Why use a lavalier microphone? Well, they're, they're, I have one right here on me. It's right next to my chest. Lavalier allows you to get the microphone away from the camera and on to the person or near the audio source. I'm the audio source right now, so the microphone is close to me. It's become, it, it is the mic of choice for news organizations, for uh, reality shows and television, even, uh, even you know, situation comedies, they, they have some lavalier microphones on them because it, it eliminates the ambient background noise and uh, get is closer to the sound source. In film, it's mostly used as a backup. Uh, sometimes we have to exclusively use them when we, we cannot get a microphone uh, in there that, that is the right microphone. And that microphone is a boom mic, which we'll talk about later. Uh, lavalier microphones come in different varieties. Uh, this one I'm wearing is a Tram 50. It's a British made microphone. It's probably, uh, one of the top choices that you can pick in any situation, whether it's uh, film or television or news. Um, the other top of the line microphones are from Shopes and uh, Sanken. Uh, Shopes is a German made, Sanken is uh, Japanese made, so they come from all over the world. They all have specific reasons that they're built the way they are. This particular microphone is very, very tiny. It is exposed because we want to try to get the best sound we can today, but, but sometimes you, you need a microphone that you can plant under clothing or out of, out of the way, especially if you're doing a drama. Um, you, people typically don't walk around with microphones on them, so you don't want to see them in the, in the video. So. Um, Okay, if you're doing a documentary, you can either expose it or not expose it. If you're doing a television spot, you can either leave it exposed or not exposed. As an audio engineer, of course, I'm going to pick to have it exposed whenever I can because you get the best sound. Here's why you want to try to keep it exposed if you can. If you take a sock and you put over your ear, it blocks a lot of the sound. The same thing happens when a microphone is under clothing. So we're going to have some tips on how to try to keep that clarity of the sound when you do hide a microphone. A lavalier microphone is specially built knowing that it will be hidden under clothes most of the time and that it is close to the body. I'm going to go off on a, a little tangent here about microphones and what happens when they get close to a sound source. Um, it's called proximity effect. And you hear this when you listen to, to DJs on the radio, for instance. They come in very, very close to the microphone. And when that happens, it increases the bass response of their voice. And when they back away, then it becomes more natural sounding. A lavalier, guess what, is close to the sound source, so the bass increases. On older lavalier microphones, this was a problem. We had to, once we recorded it and got it into post, and post means uh, uh, when you're finessing the audio, when it's, the video has already been edited and you're adding all the effects and equalizing it. But when we got it in post, we had to decrease the bass response. Guess what? The newer microphones have that bass response filtered out already. So a lot of the mics sound really good when they're next to the body and the, the uh, bass response again is, is lowered so you don't have to do that much in post. The other thing that the lavalier microphones do, they increase the treble response. They make them very uh, crisp because if it's hidden under clothing it reduces the treble or the high end and therefore it makes up for it by uh, increasing it. So uh, a choice of a lavalier microphone uh, and the correct brand and the correct model, um, you know, you can get um, really mired into the details, but just know that the modern 
lavalier microphones make up for those uh, losses. While I'm on that, there is one problem. When you hide a microphone and you cover it up, the, you have, the treble response is decreased, but you also get a uh, kind of like a honking sound if it's in the wrong place, and that's really hard to overcome in audio post. Okay, why do we put a microphone near the sound source? Well, your camera ha usually has a built-in microphone. I always like to say the marketing department put the microphone there and not the engineers. It, it's adequate for selecting, uh, you know, if you're working on B-roll and you need some general ambient sound, it, it's great. If your camera, such as right now, it's probably about mm, 10 to 12 feet away, the microphone on the camera is 10 to 12 feet away. The microphone on me is six to eight inches away. Which one do you think is going to have the better sound? The one on the camera is going to pick up more than my voice is going to pick up the entire room, the reverb, the air conditioner, the lights. The other thing, it will pick up noise on the camera. Say so you're, you're focusing, uh, you're using image stabilizer. If you're shooting on, on videotape, it will pick up the sound of the motor of the tape running. There's all kinds of problems with, with the microphone on the camera. Don't use it. Just simply don't use it. I get a lot of productions in my shop where I have to try to clean up audio where it was a camera mic and not a, a close mic such as a lav and people want miracles. They want it to sound like this mic does, not that mic. And it just is impossible. I can remove some of the background noise, but I cannot make it sound closer. I cannot do wonder work on it. No one can. So uh, you have to go back and reshoot the scene. Last week, one of those came into my shop. I said, I can only do this much. I can remove the noise. I can't bring them closer. I can, we can bring them into the studio and have them revoice the lines to video. Ultimately, the director said, you know what, we're going to go and reshoot the scenes. How much does that cost? A lot of time, a lot of money, if you have a budget, thousands of dollars a day if you have a crew. You know, spend the money and get a lavalier microphone. It's a lot cheaper than a reshoot or even an ADR session or revoicing the dialogue session. Okay. What I have here is several different models of lavalier microphones, and most of these are what we call radio mics. They are, have a transmitter that the talent wears. They wear the microphone, it plugs into a transmitter, and on the other end we have a receiver, and it plugs into either the camera or the mixer. And right now I'm wearing a, the lavalier microphone, it's a Tram 50, and I'm wearing a belt pack and here is the receiver. We actually have the receiver set up here and JP if you want to get a close-up to that you can actually see some sort of level on the meter on the Electro. This particular model is an older model of Electrosonic. It sounds like a <laughs> Flash Gordon sci-fi 50s name but it's actually one of the best in the industry. There are some uh, top models above this or on the same par and most of the major manufacturers have have models that that compete with electrosonic but they're uh, pretty pretty much an industry standard uh, these will set you back a lot of money if you're buying them you can rent them they're they're very rentable a lot of rental houses have them i would suggest going with electrosonic if you can afford it you 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 will be very, very happy. It almost sounds like there's no radio involved at all. Uh, it's almost like a direct plug. And they have really good uh, frequency um, uh, channels that, that avoid all the static and noise. And they have uh, some that are to transmit completely digitally. The next uh, line down is Sennheiser. And I don't mean to diss Sennheiser because they do make models that are on par with Electrosonics but they also make some lower lower cost uh, lavalier uh, radio mics but they don't sacrifice quality these are quality wise on par with their top of the line mics 
they, what they've sacrificed is the amount of radio uh, channels that you have to choose from. Some of the connectors on it are not quite uh, the same as they'd be on, a, on electrosonics. And we'll talk about connectors in another, uh, another issue of this, but uh, these are very, very good choice. Um, if you're in a large venue with a lot of other uh, possible people using radio mics, these would not be a, a good choice because the, cr the channels are crowded, so you do have, that is a consideration. But these are these are excellent. Uh, it's this is the G. Uh, I'm sorry, the EW100 series. It's it's pretty much an E and G electronic news gathering set. Uh, they have uh, the 100, the 200 series. I believe 400 is still in this line, and then you jump up into the thousand, several thousand dollars. Uh, these you you can get a set of these for under a thousand dollars. Probably a lot lower than that if you shop around. A used set of course a lot cheaper. Then we have Audio Technica. Audio Technica is a mysterious company to me because they have really really upper end stuff and then they have this really lower end stuff and not a whole lot in between. This one happens to run in between. This is an older model. Uh, has very good uh, radio noise rejection. Uh, has a good transmitter. Um, I don't even know what series this is but uh, I, it's it's so-so in quality uh, once you start comparing it to these others but it's not a bad choice um, I would be careful if you're picking Audio Technica to make sure that you get something that is a little bit more competitive in price with these upper end ones you won't be dissatisfied um, and then lastly over here I've got a direct plug-in mic this is exactly like the one I'm wearing except it has a connector that would plug directly in this way you can avoid a radio mic altogether if you're having problems or if you're having a, a sit down where the the talent is sitting in a chair or not moving you can use one of these and save all these batteries that you've got going here okay We've talked about the different kinds of lavaliers. Now we're going to talk about how do you mount a, a lavalier. Okay, the one I have is on the outside. We talked about why that was good. And what I've done is I've created a broadcast loop in it. Now I'm going to touch the wire and you're going to hear this sound. You should probably hear that. I'm trying to eliminate that sound by on the back, JP. And it's going to be muffled. You're going to hear the, the pitfalls of a lavalier. I've got the wire coming up and I'm, I'm grasping it with this claw on this alligator clip. Okay, sorry for the problems. You, I know you heard one of the problems of lavaliers and it's handling. Here's what a broadcast loop is. The wire coming from the plug all the way up to the head of the microphone is a transmitter of sound like a guitar string any kind of movement down here is going to vibrate and come up and rattle and you're going to have that scratchy sound any microphone you have whether it's a studio microphone or a lavalier microphone is going to have that problem of the cable transmitting sound up through there so we have to isolate that a lavalier microphone is especially susceptible to that sound about a thousand times more than a studio microphone because it's so tiny and it's it's picking up tiny tiny sounds so we our intent is to get the cable touching at a short place right below the head of the microphone so that any sound that body movement clothing movement comes up here and it gets absorbed with this shock absorber so all we have left is this little bit in the microphone head itself that could cause us potential problems. So however you have to do this, we can, you know, we can just create a loop like that if you need to. I don't really generally like to have uh, the, the knots in my cables, but you can certainly do that. You can use a clip like this to hold it down inside the clothing. This is a, a vampire clip. It simply clips on the end of the cable like that, carries it, and that, that usually is a shock absorber. I generally like to tape it on the inside. Make sure that JP can get me here. Um, I'll tape it down like this if I'm hiding the microphone. Pretend this is underneath the clothing. And I will also tape down 
the wire all throughout under the clothing and the points that are going to uh, cause a lot of problems. I will also create separate broadcast loops throughout the cable in certain areas so that I just eliminate any kind of problems that might arise. This is gaffer tape. This can really be your friend. This is not duct tape. It's gaffer tape. It is a cloth based tape that uh, you can put it on clothing, you can put it on concrete, you can put it on wood, you can put it on anything and it won't leave a residue. You, you have to leave it on for years before it leaves a residue. Duct tape we all know it just it rips paint off if you pull it, it it leaves a sticky residue. This is not cheap but a roll will last you a long time if you if you use it wisely. One of the uses I've created these little sticky triangles. You basically take a, a little patch of tape and sticky side out you roll it like this you just keep rolling it this is a probably a too long of a piece but you get the idea of how this works and it's hollow inside so what I'm going to do I'm going to grab a piece of cloth here we'll pretend that this is clothing we're going to hide it in now I'm not going to put a broadcast loop in this but just assume there's one in there and on a mic head like this which is a lot smaller this would work better but this is for demonstration purposes we're going to place this one of these on the mic head being careful not to cover the air holes which control the sound we're going to take another one and put like this and on the inside of the clothing can you get that JP yeah. we'll mount it like this and stick the clothing down to it and then we've created a little bubble for it you have to put it in the right place on the clothing you have to have your actor go through all their motions to make sure where the clothing is going to bend and where it won't bend so if I were to have to mount this microphone inside under my clothing, I might mount it, come up this way, right underneath here or here. Now, I'm not wearing a t-shirt. If you can get them to wear a t-shirt, that's great. Otherwise, it's going to go up against bare skin, or you can put it in between uh, here or even down here. If they're wearing a tie, you can sometimes stick it under the tie. You can put it up under the collar. So if, if the camera is on this side, I would probably put it on a collar on this side. If I put it on here or underneath here, the camera will see it. If you're switching throughout the scene, you might have to switch the mic back and forth. So you constantly have to be on top of it during a, a shoot. But it's worth it because you don't get this sound right here of the rattling and the clothing noise. Um, and you want to face the mic, try to face the mic towards the sound. It would. This is an omnidirectional mic. The one down here is an omnidirectional mic. But these trams and other mics, but especially the trams, also come in directional. So you can actually point them towards the sound source and eliminate a lot of the, the other sounds. Another tool is bobby pins. You can bobby pin the, the wires to different places in the clothing throughout. Um, and you, there's a there's a, a company called Countryman, and they make lavalier microphones that the head of the microphone is the end of the wire. They have no bulb on the end. It's just, if it is, it's very tiny. You can plant that microphone almost anywhere in a button. You can put it in someone's hair. I've actually put microphones in someone's hair uh, because the the whatever clothing they were wearing or weren't wearing <laughs> didn't allow me to put a microphone in a great place. Uh, so you, you have to improvise and every actor and every scene and every shot is different. You, you, one setting will not work throughout. The last thing that you'll need is another roll of tape, which I don't have with me. It's surgical tape. Uh, a lot of people are allergic to tape. You can put uh, gaffer tape right on skin. It doesn't bother my skin, but some people that have sensitive skin do. So it's good to have just a roll of surgical tape in your kit so that if you have to tape it down to someone's body you can do it and again uh, you're gonna have to stay on top of it throughout the day they're under hot lights they sweat the surgical tape comes loose so 
about every 10 minutes or so, go and just check it. Just make sure that it's still attached. Um, it, 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 you have to be fussy with a lavalier microphone in order to get good results. You can't just plant it once in the beginning of the day and hope that it uh, keeps working. One last thing about shooting under hot lights and a lavalier microphone that's planted uh, beneath the clothing, they uh, collect moisture and like anything, moisture dampens the sound and your lavalier can actually stop working. So if you can, in between, t if there's a half hour between takes, take it off or pull it out and let it dangle out in the air as the actor is going to get coffee. Uh, just to dry it out and uh, it's good to have a spare on, on hand because they will fail under hot lights of, after a period of time. Next time on Media Unlocked, boom mics. We're going to have a lot of fun. Stay tuned. <music>